Hi everyone. In this video we're going to build directly on what we did in the last one. And we're just, all we're going to do is add in the element of random chance to where we actually position our object and how the actual animation takes place. I've modified a couple things in here, so let's actually walk through the code a little bit. As you can see, in this example, I actually don't have anything on the stage itself. It's a completely empty stage. But in my library, I have my red dot object. And I've linked that so that I can actually access that by using the name red dot. So in our action script, we have some of the same basic stuff that we had before. I have a, uh, I've, I'm actually am creating the instance of the red dot using the var, uh, var statement. I'm creating a new red dot. I'm using the add child statement to actually put that on, this, on the actual display stack so I can see it. And I'm giving it a random location. I'm actually assigning a random number to its x and y coordinate. You'll see that I'm taking the math random um, method and I'm multiplying that by, by something that I don't think we've covered before, which is called the stage width property. Every movie that you create in Flash you assign what the width and height of the movie is going to be. And you can modify that in the Flash application. When I work with that in ActionScript, though, I, if, I need to know exactly what the width of the movie is and what the height of the movie is. Now, I could put in a, I could put in a number here based on what I might have set it. But if I ever change the file, that I would have to go back into ActionScript and know to modify those values. There's actually a property in ActionScript that allows us to access what the width and height of that is. In this case, we're accessing the uh, object stage, and we're accessing its property called stage width. Stage is lowercase, and the stage width, uh, the stage, and that is also lowercase, but make sure you uh, capitalize the W in width, and then also the H in height. Otherwise, you'll, otherwise you won't get the right value back. So X is going to represent the width, and Y is going to represent the height. So I access the stage width property uh, I multiply that by some random number. So I'm going to get a random number somewhere from 0 to, I believe this one is 550. So I'm going to get some random x number for that. For y, it's going to be a number from 0 to 400. So once I actually position that on, on the screen, I'll then the dot will then appear at a random location uh, on the stage. The next thing are the slope x and slope y. Last time, I gave these a fixed number. In this example, I actually modified that, so I'm using a random number for each one of these. In this case, I'm taking the random number that's generated and I'm multiplying it by 10. So the number, the range is going to be somewhere from 0 to 10. But if you notice, I've added a minus 5 at the end, which in essence is going to take that 0 to 10, it's going to shift that 5 to in the other direction. So the range is actually now negative 5 to 5. So this way, I'll have a slope for x and a slope for y where it could go, and for example, for, uh, for x, it could go to the left or it could go to the right. The other thing is with y, I can do the same thing. It'll either go up or it could go down. The rest of the, the, rest of the action script is exactly the same. I haven't modified anything else. So I'm going to run this a few times just to show you what happens. So when I run this, you'll see the object initially is on a random location and it moves in a different direction every time that I run this. So in this case it moved to the upper right, this one to the lower left, this one moved pretty much directly over to the right. And as you can see every time I run this the location of it is in a different spot and it actually moves in a different direction each time. You also notice that the speed of it actually changes each time because the slope represents the actual the actual increments that the object takes each time this uh, each time the animation uh, ticks based on the timer event. Since the range of that can be anywhere from negative 5 to 5, the slope of x or the slope of y could, could be anywhere within that range, meaning you can go quickly in one direction, quickly in the other direction, or more slowly, or maybe not even at all if it comes out as exactly 0. So what we're going to keep doing with this is we're going to start adding more abilities to start working with, uh, start working with animating with ActionScript. But in the next video, we're actually going to start introducing how to loop through different things using the for statement. And we're going to do that before we start doing more advanced animation, and we're going to do that in the next video.